Hello, and welcome to Plug It Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time on Plug It Along, we switched back to the Minister Buff plugin. Uh, I was in the middle of things there before the Farmer's Fair derailed me into the Festival Buddy plugin, and I'd like my changes to be as stable and as complete as I can make them before the big changes for Minstrels uh, hit the, the live servers. So today, uh, I want to continue making progress, um, starting with just finishing that optimization process where we're not looking at every effect every t uh, that your character has every time an effect is added or removed. I want to go ahead and try to finish that so that it is uh, all done and all of the stuff that was bound up in that logic is now still happening. Uh, as always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions. And actually, before we even get started with the plugin stuff, uh, I was interested in addressing Simply Caustic's question back in chat there. So, um, one of the things that was suggested was the LotroHQ.com website, uh, which has some class builds for different uh, uh, trait trees of different classes. And something that came up absolutely, uh, for instance, the hunter, a little underrepresented. They only have a perspective build for a red hunter. But you'll notice if you look at some of the other categories, you've got a guardian, you've got a minstrel, for instance, you are going to, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> no red minstrel. Uh, you're going to find uh, one to three of those possible builds being present. So for Guardian, you've got your defensive and your offensive build, no yellow line. A champion, you've got blue, red, and yellow, all uh, nicely represented. Burglar, one of each. Bjorning, sure. Um, but we don't have, for instance, for Hunter, just red. For Minstrel, blue and yellow, but no red, which is great. Uh, I, I didn't realize that was that way. Uh, so, I, I would not uh, want to say that this, this side is the end-all be-all and you must do things. This is just ideas, right? If I'm thinking, oh man, I wonder what a blue minstrel might look like uh, if someone else was designing them. I can come on in here and they have ideas for stats, uh, but you know, a big part of it is the trait tree for me. Like The trait tree is where you have so much customizability and it's nice to see what other people think is good and sometimes why. Like You might get a, a textual description of what's being chosen here. Uh, you also get some different build outs. So they have like the 35 trait points for legendary servers, which is really nice because if you see a trait tree with, you know, all of the point pe points is spent, um, what's the total number of points? They've got 98. Like you see a, a trait tree of 98 and then you go to Treebeard where we don't have that many points. Actually, we do have a 45 now, I think. 46. Um, potentially a couple more. <laughs> I think I've got them all. So I think, yeah, you got 46 now in Treebeard, but when you see a build with 98 trait points, it's like, yeah, but I don't know what's the priority here. And so as you see them building up these trait trees, I think I find it really useful to be like, okay, here's what they thought was important for 35 points. Here's what they thought was for 60. Here's what they thought for 98. And so if you only had that uh, 35 trait points, okay, now I can see what, what you're thinking is really important, really critical. Uh, to kind of boost your, your healing potential here in this blue line minstrel. Awesome. Uh, so I like using it for ideas, uh, even if I don't, you know, end up doing what they suggest. Um, and so that, that's what it is for me. It's, it's an inspiration, uh, if nothing else. Virtues are also really nice to get, you know, you know all else being uh, equal. If I don't want to go look at the table on the Lotro wiki, uh, I can come here and get some ideas of what other people like. Um, that being said, if you've come on in to uh, the Lotro Wiki website uh, and come look at Virtues, uh, you can get into the weeds. Oh, you have all 98 for your main hunter. Awesome. You probably already know this, but for anyone who doesn't, there is a nice little table here over on the Wiki uh, which uh, charts each of the Virtues against each of the uh, rewards. And so if you're like, man, I would really like vitality. I'm, I'm not as long lived as I want to be. Where's the biggest source of vitality? You can come in here and see at max level, the biggest source of vitality is loyalty. Hands down, if you just want vitality, that is twice as good as empathy, which is also, or sorry, fidelity, which is also good. And those are each, each even better than charity and mercy. Cool. Okay. So if you just care about uh, vitality, that's where you're going to go. So you're going to find your biggest bang for your buck for, say, finesse is going to be wit, hands down, uh, according to this chart. 
Uh, so definitely if you have specific things you're looking for out of your virtues, uh, you can always come on over to this table and just be like, okay, if I really just wanted um, uh, uh, tactical uh, mastery rating. Okay, well, there's three options here. Honesty, wisdom, and wit, and you're going to want to start with honesty. Cool. I wonder what I have. Um, honesty. Yeah, uh, I am using honesty and wit. And what was the other one? Uh, technical mastery, uh, honesty... Wisdom. Yeah, I'm using honestly wisdom and wit. Uh, this is my red line minstrel, so I definitely want more of the pew pew. Or it's a minstrel, more of the scream scream. Yeah, I don't know. I have the impression, but I don't know, that the Lotro HQ is kind of a fan organized event. Uh, that you know they, they have what they have and so it might be very possible if you put together a build um, we can see these builds are uh, uh, referenced to people so uh, this blue minstrel resolve build is by era foreign uh, if we come over to the guardian red build that's by someone else and so it might be that if you you know are charting new ground and you come up with something that you're like oh man this is really working for me uh, go ahead and set it into them, and uh, maybe maybe your build will be the kind of a recommended build on Lotro HQ until someone else comes up with a better one. So sorry, sorry, that's not a very good answer. Um, I'm sure there are other places out there. I know uh, Reddit. There's a subreddit for Lotro, and it, I'm I'm sure there are other disparate websites out there. But Lotro HQ has been useful to me for those builds it does have of kind of just spilling out all of that. Hey, Arthur provides context that that matrix is from uh, Giselda, who's a, a master numbers guy and is behind a calc stat, um, I think, plugin library. Um, Since Caustic is missing the old days in Ettenmore's pushing and pulling on the TA bridges. Well, I know they are, um, first of all, I do not do a lot of uh, PVMP, so I'm aware of the Etten Mars, but I don't, like the last time I stepped in there was 15, 16 years ago or something. Uh, I, it's not really where my focus is on the game, but I know they're working on improving the Etten Mars experience. Uh, so hopefully uh, that all comes to fruition in a way that people really like. All right. So um, virtues are one of those things where uh, on Treebeard, it's very easy. Oops to just max out your virtues at this level. We're at level 65 right now, and will be probably for the next three months. And any more virtue experience that I get is just uh, so much dust in the wind. It's very sad. We just we just got another 5,000 to 10,000 virtue XP doing Yondershire stuff today, and it's, it's just gone. <laughs> But I tried doing that. I tried to be like, okay, I'm not going to complete these de these specific deeds until after Siege of Mirkwood comes out because I don't want to waste this virtue experience. And now we're three months into Siege of Mirkwood and I'm, I'm capped up. And it's fine. Okay. Fine, 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 fine. I'm just going to spend it all. If I run short later, I'll do some missions and uh, pick the character bundle and it'll be fine. Fine, fine, fine. I just, it feels like, ah, oh, no, I'm, I'm losing this virtue. I, I, I wish there was some battery you could charge up with these rewards, put into a, like, a virtue experience carry-all or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd pay a few thousand Lotro points for one of those. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> Game mechanics or thematically, and I still want it. Okay, well, here we are uh, on the top of Minas Gloriloth in uh, southern Mirkwood. And I want to talk about the Minstrel Buff plugin. So, Simply Caustic, I hope that was a little helpful and not just a bunch of rambling, but either way, uh, you're of course welcome to stick around if plugins uh, and the making of them interests you. Okay, so where are we? Um, as always, we're going to use the carrot menu to go to System and then to Plugin Manager, or you can just type slash plugins space manager uh, to get the plugin manager. And remember, if you add or remove any plugins, you want to click that little green arrow to update uh, Lotro's understanding of what's available. And when you're loading a plugin, just click that plugin and click load. Awesome. So a Minstrel Buff plugin, when it first loads, all the windows are just kind of in the upper left. They don't know where they're supposed to be going. I'm going to use my unlock the UI uh, control backslash to move these around to make it a little bit easier to see them. We have the melodic interlude window, we have the Minstrel Buff window, we also have the soliloquy tracker window. Um, and only one of them is currently visible. Uh, and that's because we do not have the only visible in combat box checked yet. 
Awesome. Well, last time we uh, went ahead and added a scalability to that main window so we can make it bigger. I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to two times visibility so we can just kind of see what we're working with. We already have one of those for the modic interlude uh, uh, window as well, but we're not going to be playing with that uh, right now. Okay. So, also, um, we're going to be uh, looking at the source code for the plugin. This is done in Lua, and we can use the Visual Studio code. And if I click on the wrong window, it just starts spinning my camera. Awesome. So, this is Visual Studio code. Uh, this is a free tool that you can download for personal use, and uh, you can use the Lua extension and the Lotro API extension developed by a community member, Lunar Water, to bring IntelliSense to your plugins. Excellent. All right, and we are using source control, or we're trying to. And in this case, I'm using the fork uh, program from fork.dev, and it is wrapping around a Git repository. Cool, we're all caught up. One of the things I like to do is at the beginning of uh, when I'm working is to look at source control and see are there any outstanding changes that I didn't get around to committing before I get started. Because one of the things source control buys you, one of the so delightful aspects of it is you can be coding around for a while and be like, ah, oh, none of this is working. I made a huge mistake. 20 minutes ago, I should have gone in a different direction. I just want to blow it all away and reset to where I was when I sat down today. And with source control, we can do that. We have a almost completely clean directory. The only file that has changed from the last commit, from the last snapshot, is our options. And this is where we're turning the debug options on, which is um, a fine thing to have in our development environment. Uh, and we can see all of the changes we made last time uh, on the 13th of September. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten separate commits. Great. We were very productive last week. Uh, hopefully we will be again this week. So we have a clean working space. If we just go off in the wrong direction and need to throw it all away, super easy. A couple of clicks and we're back to where we are right now. Um, I wish I had had something like this during my college career for uh, even non-code things. I, 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 I suspect others besides me have had that experience of having like a final written uh, project, like a Microsoft Word file, and then um, you know written project final, written project really final, written project final two, written project this is the last one. Like just making backups of that file uh, as you're working because you're afraid of uh, data loss if if uh, the file gets corrupted or something, uh, or you just you know I need to save it in the state that it is right now. And source control just makes that so much more. Uh, nice. Uh, and nowadays you can just use Markdown, for instance, which is only text, but allows you to mark things up with bold and italics and whatnot, and then run that through a filter to produce a Word document or a PDF or something, but you're not working with these giant uh, Word do uh, documents at that point. You're just working with a text file. And that's where source control really shines, is comparing one text file to another text file. Plain text. Okay, well, enough of me rambling about the, uh, the development process. Let's come take a look at our to-do file. And this is just a, sp a spot to put our ideas. Okay, so what were some of the things that we thought were important at the time we threw them into this file? Some things can just uh, be overcome by events, you know? Okay, so I made a note last time that there's a variable called next anthem effect place, um, which is very confusing to deal with. But it does work, and we can just work around it for right now. So I want to say that's not a very high priority thing for today, but it's definitely on the list of, oh yeah, if I can wave a magic wand and fix it, we want to fix it. All right, so don't forget to handle serious business and other things in Refresh Effect Display. This is like the thing, uh, is Refresh Effect Display needs to go away. Um, and this was the old logic, the old way of dealing, uh, of handling whether or not we think we have ballads, whether or not we think we have anthems. Uh, the whole beauty of this plugin is it's tracking, oh yes, you do have these anthems, here's how long you have left, you have these ballads, oh no, the ballads went away. Uh, and it was doing this by every time you had an effect added or removed to your effect list, it re-looked at every single effect decided if they were ballads, 
decided if they were anthems. Uh, oh, sorry. First, it would take all the effects and copy them and sort them by time. <laughs> And then it would check each one to see if it cared about it, if it was a ballad or if it was an anthem, that kind of thing. And then it would do something with the thing. And so the redesign was to say, how about we just, when an effect is added or removed, say, is that effect a ballad? Is it an anthem? Do we care about it? Uh, and not look at every single effect. We've already looked at those. Um, so that's going pretty well, but we're, we're kind of in, in the middle. And that's that old function was the refresh effect display. That was the look at everything every single time something changes. And I don't know that it was specifically not perform performant. Like it could have been fine uh, on a modern computer. Maybe it caused absolutely no lag to the user. It just felt dirty, right? It just feels like maybe we shouldn't redo all of this work every single time we do something. Um, if we were in a situation no, no, I, I, even if you could manually cancel some of these effects, or even if someone could dispel them from you, I still, yeah, uh, you'd still, you'd still want to do this, I think. So that's, that's, uh, that's the, the, the goal I have is, yeah, get rid of that refresh effect display function and just break it up into an effect was added, an effect was removed, only care about that effect. So we had another cleanup thing, move a uh, dump function into, no, that's not important. I'll scroll it down and I'm just using like the first thing in the list is most important and just reordering things. All right, go back and delete excessive debug statements that were committed. That just doesn't seem very important. Um, now that the UI cares about the size of the screen. Oh, that's a good point. Um, we are able to resize these windows to ridiculously large, but uh, that scaling is saved in a file uh, and, and internally based on a percentage of how much of that screen it's using. Right now, maybe it's using 20% of the screen width. And so if I go and change the resolution of the game, uh, that's not going to be picked up on. And we could, we could do something about that. I feel like it's not a high priority for today. So we're gonna scroll uh, that down. All right, and then a restructuring thing, a buff windows dot window property uh, should be done away with. I completely agree that this should be. Um, but uh, maybe not today. So we're gonna focus on the refresh effect display, finalizing that change. Okay, melodic interlude. When scaling bars change to make the window visible. That's an interesting one because, yeah, right now you have to kind of unlock the windows to make it visible. But we know when we are scaling. And one of the things I wanna do is just maybe start up a two to five second timer uh, restart it each time the scaling changes and just make the window visible for as long as you're changing the scaling and then a couple seconds later hide it again. And I think that's true for any of these windows. If this window is only visible in combat, I still want to see it while I'm scaling the thing. At any rate, does, um, does that by uh, there's a button in the options where you kind of unlock it for, for, for moving it around um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think we could just make it visible, start a timer, hide it again. The complication there is that if this window is, is visible for other reasons, made visible in the meantime, like you've gone into combat, that needs to override that hiding. And so it's more complicated than just uh, make it visible and then definitely hide it after X number of seconds. You want to conditionally hide it if nothing else has happened in the meantime, you want to hide it. Otherwise, you want to just let that new thing take priority. So there's enough subtleties in there that that's, that's going to take a few minutes to think about. All right. Melo uh, main window and melodic interlude. So it's not just a melodic interlude anymore. And I do like that. We're going to move that up into the do it someday. Okay. That's a good point. Um, the melodic interlude, melodic interlude shortcuts. Um, the way that works is it pops up a raise the spirit and a chord of salvation. And I do want to just go check on Evernight where I've got a high level uh, minstrel and make sure improved versions of this are still working. I think the game has it so that any raise the spirit will trigger the underlying whatever raise the spirit you can do, but it's good to double check before people are like, hey, I clicked the button and I just got a general error. Awesome. All right, there was a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. I was like, hey, we could do stuff. 
Uh, I'm going to not worry about that today. So we're going to go off in search of refresh effect display and figure out what's up with this. So one of the things we were doing was stopping to use refresh effect display. So in fact, we could come out and delete that reference to it here. Uh, refresh effect display is being called, oh, interesting. Hmm, yes. When we first start up the plugin, we do actually want to scan through all of the effects and uh, take that into account. So we can't get rid of it completely. Uh, but we can stop calling it here. Okay. All right. So the main, uh, the root of what we were doing was the effects added and effect removed functions. And these were going to look at the effect and figure out do we care about this one effect but nothing else. The effects cleared function, as far as I can tell, doesn't actually get called. Maybe in extreme cases like you're logging out and all of your effects go away. Uh, but in general, if we get an effects cleared, uh, which I've never seen during testing, then let's just redo everything. I think that's fine. And then we have the refresh effects display. Okay, so first of all, this was a good reminder. Uh, it needs to not go away. We use it to grab the initial state during a startup. Right, but in effects added slash effect added slash effect removed, don't forget that. Okay, cool. Okay, at a certain point, we were playing, I think it was us, someone was playing around with the local party. What's uh, what's this big block of commented code doing? Uh, we have a get party, if it's not, there's that. Uh, if there's more than one person, we're doing account, name, morale, effects, cool. Uh, we're looking at the effects on the party, okay. So there are some notorious issues with getting effects and status on things that are not your player in the uh, Lotro API Lua interface. And I think this was uh, an a, attempt to kind of poke around at that and see what was up. But I feel pretty comfortable just saying this was pretty basic debug code just to poke around at the party system and the effects list of your other uh, fellowship members. And we're just gonna go ahead and delete that. In fact, this debug table class um, we should hoist this somewhere. Uh, it doesn't need to be here in main. Let's go ahead and do we have a general functions? Let's find out. We have, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, a common place to put some helper functions is just a file general functions dot Lua. So I've seen that in a number of uh, plugins, but wherever you're going to put it, it's a nice place to put these debug functions or uh, uh, other things. So let's go ahead and make a new file, general functions dot Lua. And if we're gonna use that, just remember to come on in to your uh, main import file and let's go ahead and import that. And it's going to be a really early one because uh, these are journal functions that could be used by any other file. So import minstrel buff dot minstrel buff window. Maybe I should just copy paste. My fingers are not typing this well. All right. And then that is general functions. Excellent. Now we can go ahead and move in. All right, um, this is interesting. We have a function write buffs to chat. Really doesn't seem that needs to be here and yet. 
trying to hold off on that and just uh, not get too distracted. I'm already already one or two levels deep of being distracted. So we're going to go ahead and cut out this debug table function and move it into general functions. And since we're in here, we're already after importing turbine and turbine gameplay. That's probably enough for our purposes. We got a turbine and dot, yep, that shell dot right line. Okay. Anything else large and block commented like that that we want to take it out? Um, we did have that note about dump. Yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and just hoist that on up. And this has the added effect of, since this is being imported earlier into the chain, uh, it's going to be more readily available. Yeah, since it was being called in a function, that probably doesn't matter though. Okay, it's a nice to have, but it doesn't really matter. Just noticing my in game music did not seem to be there. Maybe there's just no music uh, staged for Minus Gloriloth. Okay. Um, so, what do we have? Actually, we've done a couple of changes already. We've made a new um, a file just to pop those general functions that are, uh, we might want to have anywhere, and especially for things like debugs, uh, debug output. So, we have a new file, and in main, we're going to go ahead and import that. And we're going to go ahead and move the debug function. Great. And we're going to move the debug table. And while we're at it, we'll just, um, yeah. All right. Those things are co-mingling, and I would like them to not be. So I'm going to use a third-party comparison and go ahead and pop in this block delete that I do want to do, just not quite yet. So instead, we're going to come on here, and we just have the debug table that we're removing from here. Awesome. General functions, dump, debug table. From main, we're adding that import, and then we remove those two. Anything else? Nope. We have some other a little cleanups, and we're going to come back to that. OK, so moved, dump, and debug table to general functions. And then, well, in that case, one of those was actually on the to-do list. Move main into general functions. All right. I'll go ahead and remove that. And we've got general to-do file changes. To-do file changes. And finally, we've gone ahead and removed no longer used references to refresh effect display. Great. So that is those three and we're good. We are back to a clean working environment. So all that stuff, uh, and this is this is so easy to do when you're developing is you do something cool like that and you're like, I'm on a roll, let's keep going and you keep going and keep going and keep going and some of those easy to isolate changes that you could have committed early on kind of get mixed up with all the other changes and suddenly it's a lot harder to pick apart uh, what have you done, and how much of it was correct? <laughs> um, so I like to make these incremental commits when I can uh, convince myself to pause the, the really cool thing I'm working on, because again, with a clean working directory, it's very easy to know what has changed and get a sense of was that the right thing to change. Okay, so coming back in, refresh effect display. We need a comment there, because otherwise someone's going to come in and be like, we don't need this anymore. Uh, so we need to come to refresh effect display and change this comment. Occurs when a buff effect is added or removed. That's not true anymore. Uh, refreshes the buff window comments. So that is true. Refreshes buff window contents completely by rescanning sorry by rescanning every effect in, uh, on the player. Now, just thinking about that, what does that mean? Uh, why, 
what can we do with this function to avoid having so much duplicated stuff? Because this, this function is reaching deep into the buff window to do stuff. Uh, and we want to we wanna stop doing as much as we can. And it occurs to me that the first thing we do is get every effect, and then we sort the, those effects. But that means we could then go through each effect and then just call the effect added function as if it had just uh, come in. Would that be the correct thing? Probably. I think we should try that. So that's going to go into the to-do file as idea. Get the sorted list of effects. Uh, I, sorry, idea. Uh, empty out the buff window. Then get the sorted list of effects. Call effect added on each effect. Let that function uh, take care of everything. I like the idea of that, but that does mean we need that function to be complete. Awesome. So uh, what are some things that are missing? We already know the serious business is a thing that we were interested in. And what we want to make sure is, can we see the serious business effect coming and going? Now for that, I might actually travel from here in Southern Mirkwood off to the Breland Festival Fields because there's a pocket around the stage there that has a serious business effect. Uh, and that is very useful because you can just step in, step out, step in, step out um, uh, in the landscape as opposed to say Duland, which has a cave that you have to transition in and out of to get serious business. Um, Okay, um, so serious business was a thing, uh, was there anything else? We'll start with serious business. And for that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my return to Bree skill. And away we go. No, uh, no matter if there's a festival running or not, there is a shortcut horse here at the west gate of Bree that will take you over to the festival grounds. This is really useful um, just if you're trying to go in that direction. But since we are trying to go to the festival grounds, even better. But before we get too far into this, we're going to want to maybe add a little debug statement so we know um, that we're getting and losing uh, that serious business effect. Let's go ahead and replicate it first and then go into the code and give ourselves a note that yes, we're getting it, yes, we're losing it. Oh, I already have it. Okay. So right around here by the milestone, we can see if we step a little closer, we get serious business. Their festival consumables have been disabled in this area. This is actually a lighter version. There's a serious business that stops uh, emotes as well. This one is stopping festival consumables, uh, but not emotes. So it's a lighter version of serious business. I want to say that uh, this got documented, maybe by me, over uh, on the wiki. And now I want to confirm my memory. So if we could type Metro Wiki Serious Business. Great. All right. So here we go. Um, so there's two versions of this. Uh, we've got Serious Business. This is um, here and Frostbuff Theater and the Prancing Pony. Your festival consumables have been disabled. And then other serious business, emotes and run speed effects have been disabled. And you'll see this in things like Hobnanigans, where being able to run faster would be perhaps a little bit unfair. Excellent. Um, all right, I'm curious. Yes, I did make an edit to this page. Cool. Okay, so what we want to do is in the add effect added and effect removed, we want to just go ahead and 
spit that out. So we have a name, turbine.shell.writeline, effect added, and we'll add that in. All right, and same thing, on effect removed, effect removed with the name. Awesome. Coming on in, Fuggle Manager, unload, reload, awesome. So we can see effect removed, serious business, effect added, serious business, effect removed, serious business, effect added, serious business. We're in luck. That is being treated just like a normal effect and our effect added uh, callback function can see that. So we wanna ask ourselves, what were we doing with that? What, uh, what's going on here? Let's see, if we go ahead and split down, there we go. Uh, let's come on down here and check on what this is. So what were we doing with the check for serious business? Uh, we were saying if we are checking for serious business and if it is not serious business, um, and this, oh, and we haven't already seen serious business, and if this is serious business, then we're gonna go ahead and set is serious business to true. And we're going to use that somewhere. Uh, in this case, we're just uh, setting the buff window set serious business. Oh, that sounds really easy. Okay. So what we want is, we're already checking for is valid ballot effect. I feel like this would be a little easier to read with some spaces. Is that just me? All right, uh, let's go ahead and is this valid? Is it valid anthem? Is it war speech effect? Is it valid melodic interlude effect? Now, it feels like it would be easier to have a table where each of the effects are and as the key, and then the value is the thing that we should do with it if we find it. Um, there's a lot of checking around, like is this, is this, is this, that it feels like is a little redundant. But that's a bigger structural change that I'm willing to commit to right now. It's just uh, the thing that I think when I see all this if, else, uh, else if, else if, else if. But we do want to go ahead and say else if something. Then, and what we want in here is a function we can call that does this kind of thing. Uh, that is to say, is valid melodic into the effect? Or is it? Hmm. A function's easier because it fits into this whole um, yeah I think a function makes sense in that case we want to go ahead and come down to is melodic, uh, valid melodic and other effect and we're gonna make a new one function minister buff main is um, serious business change and this is the effect name, oops, effect name, there we go. And so the key is, we're not actually asking, is this serious business? We're asking that combined question of, do we, you know, are we looking for serious business and it hasn't already been serious business and uh, this is uh, serious business. So that combination, and we can spell that out. Um, I think we need to promote is serious business currently because all of this is happening in main and in, instead of in buff window, main probably needs a state variable to track serious business. Let's see. So we're gonna go ahead and self dot is serious business on equals false. On present, present. Okay, so what we want to do is um, make use of that. I'm going to come back to serious business. Okay, that's good. Okay, we have local um, should check for 
I already have that, yes. Whoops. If self.check for serious business and not self. is serious business, uh, and effect name equals self. serious business effect, and then we're going to go ahead and do something. Uh, we'll go ahead and set is uh, self dot is serious business present equals true, and then return. Uh, actually, we'll come on into else self dot is serious business present equals false, and then we'll go ahead and return self dot is serious business present. Okay, and this we can do. Uh, we can call it in both the effect added and the effect removed and ideally get a consistent result of um, it's uh, true if we care about it and if it wasn't true and if the effect is serious business. Otherwise, it's false for whatever reason we're not caring about it. Awesome. Let's throw a cat in the background. There is. Everybody blends into the, the couch over there. Just right there is not actually a cushion. It is a very lazy cat. That's OK. I can appreciate that. OK. Um, so I think that is correct, but we are going to want to test that. And so uh, we have, we're going to go ahead and um, come back into effect added and say self is serious business change, and we're going to pass in that name. Then uh, we want to do the same thing as before, which was we're setting that self uh, buff window and set serious business. And in the, oh, that's actually effects remove. How funny. So we're inverting that check. Is that the right way to write an out statement? I'm not sure. Let's reload and find out. That looks fine. So we're going to come on up here. Same thing. Uh, I'm going to add some white space to make this a little bit easier to read. Uh, and then come on in and place this if serious business that. And then we're going to set that to true. Okay. Oh, thanks, Mubat. Yes, this week's freebie code is a rally horn, rally to your side. We used that on Saturday. Uh, one of our fellowship members was like, oh, I haven't actually discovered the temple, uh, the lost temple. And we were like, boop, after grabbing that in the store. It's very simple. All right. Do I like this? I think I do. But what I really want to do is come on into the buff window, set serious business, and just add a little log. Turbine.shell.writeline setting serious business to. And this is meant to be a Boolean value. And if you pass a Boolean value into uh, string cat nation like this, Lua does not like it. So we're going to go ahead and do a dump of is serious business. Uh, and that'll format that into a string. We might be able to just get away with two string, uh, but I'm used to sanitizing things with a dump format, uh, 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 dump function. It's good for tables, good for nulls. It's it's very uh, flexible. Okay, so we are gonna step forward. Effect added serious business. Great. Effect removed serious business. Setting serious business to false. Effect added effect removed. So half of this is working. Awesome. Let's come back into the uh, set. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. 
Yeah. Um, all right. So we want. Oh, of course. We need to remember to actually care about uh, serious business. So there's a hide UI when serious business is active. This is how we care about serious business. And we can see we are kind of unnecessarily calling buff window with false uh, a lot more than we might otherwise. If we're not caring about it, we keep on saying false. But we do have this check. If the new value is not equal to the existing value, then do stuff. And if we just say false, 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 we're going to get to this Boolean to Boolean comparison and bail out early. So we suffer the cost of a function call, but that's it. And I think that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and click hide UI when serious business is active. This is what toggles the um, check for serious business flag. Now we are checking for it. We can step on forward. We see effect added, serious business, setting serious business to true, effect removed, setting serious business to false. Now, if we wanted to be a little bit more uh, intricate in our uh, logic testing, we can come on into buff window and say, we're only going to write this out if this is it different um, is satisfied. So coming back in, cool, setting serious business to true, setting serious business to false. Let's say to stop caring about it effect added, effect removed, but we're no longer propagating that out because we don't care about it. Go ahead and um, use it again. Great. Setting to true, setting to false. Great. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So uh, we do have some debug statements in here, but this uh, is a very first, a good first approximation of what we wanted to see, which was uh, this logic and the complete refresh can now be handled by the effect added and effect, effect removed functions. It's no longer necessary in here. Great. Let's go ahead and get rid of that vertical split for a second. And let's look at source control and see if we're happy with this. Okay, serious business, great. Um, okay, so we have a to-do file change, no, no worries there. In the buff window, we had that uh, debug output. We don't want to commit that. And here in main, we go ahead and capture that variation, uh, that, that, that variable of is serious business present. That's great, we can stage that. We have debug, new line, new line, new line. We have here is the actual change we want. I'm going to hold off on those new lines. I think it might be useful to commit them in, but we'll do that separately. We have another debug, new line, new line, new line, and then the actual changes. We have uh, some important uh, comments. We'll come back to that in a sec. And we have the is serious business change. And we want to go ahead and capture that whole function. So we're going to commit just the things that are hoisting out that set serious business, set serious business, that, that. Great. Okay, pretty good, pretty good, and we're done. Okay, so uh, check incoming, sorry, check uh, added and removed effects for serious business if, um, uh, what is the name of that option? If hide UI when serious business is active. And this all dates back to the Spring Festival and those shrews in Doolin. Because sometimes those shrews are rabid and they attack you. And, which, you know, fa fair. If I was a rabid shoe, I would probably attack you as well. But there's an option here in the minstrel buff that says only visible in combat. And what would happen is I'd be busy stomping trues and then one of them would bite me and this thing would show up. And it would, you know, I'd stay in combat until that shrew was defeated and this, this thing just sitting on my screen. And eventually it goes away. Great, I stomp some more shrews and it's back. And it uh, just felt like um, that was not helpful. And so 
Now, with this change, and this is even better, in this change, if you go into an area with serious business and have this option selected, then we are not going to pay attention to things uh, until you leave serious business, is what I think is going on. So if I come on over here, oh, we can see the window disappeared, right? Um, and if I go ahead and uh, activate some ballads, activate some anthems, we see them coming in, but we're not doing anything with them. It's exactly what we want. And once we leave the serious business area, hey, it's back. And so um, the window, the UI is hidden appropriately. And that's great. We're, we can still pay attention to them coming in, so we can still show the UI correctly. Uh, that's no problem. Uh, and in fact, it's kind of fun to just, um, let's see. Just be bipping back and forth between on and off. Where's my serious business? Hmm. I'll have to go back and check and see that I understand how this works. I thought it was going to disappear. There we go. Well, that's an interesting edge case in there. Some uh, some bit of bipping back and forth across the line did not uh, agree with uh, the logic there. Oh. If you if you actively make the thing come up, then it looks like that line of logic does not make this high. Interesting. So effect removed, effect added. Okay, uh, this is a good thing to document. All right, possible bug. Hide UI when serious business is active seems to get into states where the UI is visible while it shouldn't be. For instance, well, uh, I have a serious business active and Use major ballad heal. UI becomes visible. Okay, so make serious business active. It's still. All right, we're just going to go ahead and unload and reload. Come on in here. Great. Major ballad. Yeah, okay. Okay. Short and too long to read. Use major ballad and serious business and watch the UI become visible. The visibility for uh, this window is complicated uh, because we want the window to be visible if you're you know, all the time or I wonder if it works better if, if the only in combat thing happens. Let's find out. Nope, it still comes up. Yeah, so we... W oh, apparently I have some emboldening finish on. That's fun. Um, hmm. um, sorry. Uh, yeah, we uh, want this thing either visible all the time or only visible during combat, and if it is only visible during combat, also just be visible generally if something on here is on, even if you're no longer in combat. Like, I'm not in combat right now. We do want the UI to be visible. Lord Zack uh, has arrived. We can start the plugins. I'm here. Well, welcome, Lord Zack. Uh, we are playing around with the serious business uh, perimeter here by the stage in the festival grounds, uh, making sure that we can now pay attention to it. Now, while we were in here, whoops, um, we want to go ahead and uh, commit some of these other changes. For instance, um, 
this comment uh, for refresh effect display. Uh, we want to keep the function, but kind of gut how it's doing it. So updated comment. Great. Um, cool. Add a bug to to do file. Great. Lord Zach has a bunch of emotes, uh, emoticons perhaps, of things taking notes. Well, I appreciate the support. There's quite the variety there. But none of them look like they're from Lotro. <laughs> so if you get a hobbit taking notes, let me know. Okay, we had a, to, um, um, a debug statement here. Excellent. Don't want to interrupt that. But we also had these um, new lines that I think really make this a little bit easier to read. I'm going to come back in here. All of this white space um, kind of fought this effect of, eh, this is all kind of squeezed together. Not a fan of how difficult it was to kind of conceptually say ballad or anthem or war speech or whatever. <coughs> so we want to go ahead and commit that and all of this. We want to go ahead and, are we separating out the name here? Maybe, maybe that makes sense. Let's grab that new line there. Uh, and I grab this new line as well, and this one, and then suddenly these are all just isolated. Great. We don't want to commit that turbine uh, debug statement. All right, and we're just going to say added vertical white space for readability. And that's important. Uh, you want to be kind to whoever is maintaining your plugin in the future. There's a very good chance that person is going to be you. Um, well, a future version of you, and it's very nice to just be nice to yourself. Uh, maintainability is, for a lot of applications, kind of the number one thing that you, you want to be thinking about. Like, sure, you want the thing to work. You want the thing to work today. But if it's not maintainable, if it's very fragile, uh, fragilely written, then what works today suddenly doesn't work tomorrow, and you're like, oh, I don't know why this doesn't work. And so it can be very satisfying to just bust something out and it works and it's great. But if you have eyes for the thing to last for a while, maintainability is important. Um, so thinking, thinking now about those issues that might happen later for um, forwards compatibility, backwards compatibility, that sort of thing. And Zach is commenting about maybe Locutro could make emotes of uh, Lord of the Rings things. Maybe. I don't actually know how Twitch emotes work. I don't know if it, someone has to pay any money anywhere to make emotes happen or how. I, I'm woefully undereducated on how Twitch works. Like, I can, I can make a stream go, I can watch a stream, I can type in chat, and that kind of hits the end of my, my Twitch knowledge, which is funny given where we are here today. Okay, so we have gone through uh, refresh, eff refresh Effect Display, and we're just gonna, we should really kind of come through here and see what else we care about. Um, if possible, the goal is get the effects list, sort the effects list, call effect added on each one. First, having told Buff Window to get rid of anything in its UI. So I guess the question is, do we have a way to do that? Uh, buff window uh, has some things like hide anthem, awesome. Uh, we have a ballad added in a buff window. We're already using that. All right, we have an anthem added. I have an anthem. Do we have anthems removed? Of course not. We needed to. I. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to grasp all the moving parts here. All right, we have ballot ended. Awesome. Ah, and then we hide the anthems here that aren't appropriate. Okay. 
Let's come on into the buff window and see where all do we use hide anthem. We have anthem removed, great. We have the hide anthem function, and that is all. Um, so what we would like to do, and I think we could do this with a debug button for testing, is we would like the ability to say, hey, uh, act as if none of these are present. Just wipe it clean. So, um, I think what we want to do is come on into the options window and we're going to make a debug capability. So, in options, we're looking for something called debug options. Debug options. Oh, good. If um, show debug options, then do stuff. And we're going to come on in here and we're going to add a button. Self dot debug um, clear. Let's call it buff window clear uh, button equals, and this is just going to be a turbine dot UI dot lotro dot button. And again, with any UI element, the first thing we want to do is set the parent. Oh, hello, Monstein. That's okay. Sometimes you got to log in, your guardian. Uh, set parent. We're going to go ahead and and we're just called it parent. Make it nice and easy. Uh, we're going to do a self dot that uh, set position, and we're doing all these intended twenty, and we're just doing it using this variable y. Very nice to just step the y variable down. Then you never have to think about what height you are. Hard coding your heights in UIs and your positions in UIs is fraught with danger. Oh Lord, Zach has put rainbows saying the word Tuesday into chat. I like it. Hey, as soon as they're also emotes. I'm impressed with all the things you can do as a, what is that, like a 32 by 32 pixel emote? Uh, set size, this is just a button. The previous button was like 200 by 20. That sounds good. It seems a little wide, actually. Let's uh, step back up and see a button more like 150. Let's do that. All right, we'll start with a 150 button. And we're gonna do this, uh, the setting of the text. This is the text on the button. And we're gonna say um, clear buff window. Then we're gonna hit the end key accidentally, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, scroll back up. It's a wild ride. We're gonna go ahead and override the click handler to be an anonymous function, taking a sender and an argument and in this function, first of all, we're just going to go ahead and do a turbine.shell.writeline because we just want to verify that we wrote it all correctly and there's nothing for it to do yet. We haven't written that part. So buff uh, clear, clear buff window clicked. Okay, um, that's great. And we do want to go ahead and bump down that y equals y plus 30. Great. And the final thing is somewhere in here we have a height for the window, we want to go ahead and bump that up by another 30 as well. So if show data by options, height is height plus 230. Cool. Let's come on back in, unload, reload, get that in. We have the clear buff window button. Awesome. It's about the right size. That's great. Click it, clear buff window clicked. Perfect. So that's adding a button to our options UI. And now we need a function for it to call. Buff window needs a function. And show anthem, height anthem, show effect, height effect. Might as well, oh, anthem removed, anthem added, anthem shift. Awesome. That seems like a good place. We're going to go ahead and write function buff window clear. Yeah, that's fine. Clear. And what, what does this function do? Function clears the anthem. The UI primarily used by main buff win. Boy, I spelled that one wrong. Uh, primarily used by <laughs> minstrel buff main refresh effect display to ensure that all existing UI elements uh, to, to ensure that UI is ready to receive all effects. 
Cool. And now here's, again, just a simple little um, output because the goal is from the option window, we want to go ahead and say, um, we want to have the call go through here to buff window and we want to call clear. Awesome. So we no, want to, no longer want to report on the button being clicked, we want instead to report that we're calling that function and we are, we have a buff window clear written out to our console. So everything's ready for us to actually write the function, but we're done in the options window. We have a button. This is where we need to work now. So we have a hide anthem uh, function. Hide anthem, that seems like a pretty good uh, place to start. So we're gonna go ahead and um, call hide anthem, but what does the get anthem effect display function look like? That's looking at anthem effects display, great. And that is a table. And we know that table is going uh, from one to seven. Now that's probably going to need to change here uh, with the upcoming minstrel changes, but we're not thinking about that right now. We're just trying to finish what we're working on right now. So we want to go ahead and note the anthem effect displays, anthem effect borders, these are indexed by a number that starts at one and increments. Uh, and so we can use the octothorpe uh, or hashtag or pound sign to get the, uh, the number of elements in these uh, tables. Excellent. So we can make sure we're calling hide anthem. Great. You know, it just occurs to me, I should just copy the way that's iterating. Because I always forget how to do uh, loops correctly. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this instead. So we have 4i goes from 1 to 7. They're explicitly saying it's incrementing by one. I tend to like to omit that if we're if we are just doing plus one each time. I like to just make that an implicit. Uh, you can do uh, by one, by two, by negative one if you want to go backwards. Uh, you can do whatever, but if you're just doing plus one, it feels like clutter to me. Uh, and this seven here. Uh, if we want to go ahead and use the anthem effect displays, awesome. We can actually do two, the max of anthem effect displays. We could even save that off. I don't know the performance hit of doing a uh, length check on a table in Lua. It's one of those things where I keep feeling like I should know it, but does it have to go actually loop through it all? Does it, is it a constant time check? I'm not sure. But it's very easy to say uh, number of anthems as a local variable, and then go ahead and just hoist that on up so that we only check it once. <laughs> Lord Zach says, you use a seven, but can I propose a constant? Absolutely. Now that's something I will often go on a tangent about is the use of magic numbers, in this case, seven, as the how many spots are we making for anthems? In this case, there's a plus one because sometimes you'll see an anthem come in and then the old version of it move out. And so uh, it's you can get an, uh, an extra anthem uh, if you watch effects come in and out because the, the ordering isn't quite what you would think as a... Uh, as maybe as a, as a player. Uh, absolutely, Lord Zach, that should be a seven. I believe that predates any of the changes I've been working on today. And one of these days that's gonna get hoisted into a variable because uh, absolutely just scattering a seven there, not helpful. Uh, but because of the minstrel changes that are coming down the pipeline, I'm not even sure, uh, I haven't had a chance to check them out, but I, I, they're adding in anthems, and so I think it might be technically possible to have more than six anthems active, maybe, um, especially if you are uh, in a fellowship with other minstrels. And so that needs to, 
I want to say they're, uh, I don't know about new anthems, they're definitely resurrecting an old anthem that is no longer in play. Uh, and they might even be bringing out a new one, they might be retiring other ones, I don't know. There's, there's, uh, if you haven't seen it, the bull roar notes uh, are extensive uh, for minstrels. They're doing a massive uh, uh, kind of rework of how things are working there. Uh, Anyway, so I'm trying to hold off on being too, like, oh, it's time to make massive changes in this plugin uh, until I see what's coming down the pipe there. I think nothing I'm doing today is going to be, uh, is going to be overwritten by that, but if it is, this was just a good exercise. Ah, thank you. Little Redhead has posted um, a link to uh, the 33.2 beta 3... Uh, notes in chat. Uh, let's see. Okay, thanks uh, for that little red hand. Um, so if we come in here, um, we can see uh, minstrel changes um, is all of that. It's like, there's some stuff, there's some opening, and just a wall of text of minstrel changes, and then some uh, PDMP stuff uh, is the rest of this. So, looks like there's some mis miscellaneous changes. So, whole bunch of PDMP, whole bunch of minstrel rework, and then a couple things around the edges. Exactly, Lord Zach is quoting from the minstrels. Um, because the yellow line can no longer be chosen as specialization, just like with the brawlers, um, yellow traits costs have been adjusted. So you're going to be able to specialize in a trait tree and then pick things out of yellow. And if you're familiar with brawlers where you can only do red or blue and then also just pick from yellow, same, same deal. And, but the, the, what's available here and the point costs of those are being reworked because of that change. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things here with anthems. There's some uh, pink text here I haven't read yet. <laughs> Uh, there's some sort of thing where anthems are going to combine together, uh, like there's a lesser anthem and a greater anthem, and if you have, them, you have done them both, you get a combined effect. It sounds cool. Uh, if I were not uh, spending 20 to 30 hours a week in, uh, in language classes right now, I'd be all over this. <laughs> but that being said, uh, there is potentially some major uh, uh, changes that need to happen to the Minstrel Book plugin, uh, assuming it is even usable. I, I hope it is. I think it is. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's, this is coming down uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks, probably. Um, last week, I believe Severlin and Cord were chatting on Friday, and one of them made it sound as if they felt like a lot of this work was done uh, and might soon see the light of day, but no promises were made. So if it happens on tomorrow's patch, okay. Yeah, that was hinted at. If it happens three weeks from now, okay, it's a huge change. I can appreciate them uh, not being quite ready for it. Uh, but when the servers come back up tomorrow, Minstrels on live might be very different than they were. And this Saturday's gameplay is going to be very painful for me as all of my muscle memory needs to be reworked. Anyhow, uh, thank you, Lord of the Squids, for uh, very thorough notes on Bulwar. Okay. Um... Oh, I've hit escape accidentally. Okay. Um, we have a way to hide all the anthems. Uh, do we have a hide ballad? We have ballad backgrounds, ballad effects. Okay, ballad effects displays. Where is this being manipulated? Ballad effects display. You know, I recall in the options window, there was a thing to clear ballads. Let's take a look at that, clear ballads. Ah, that was different, okay. <laughs> Lord Zach says, I've decided Lord of the Squids is now one of my nemeses. <laughs> oh. You know, I mean, don't treat the messenger. I mean, I, I can't imagine Lord of Squids was the only uh, person behind that change. Okay, so in here we have a 
um, ballad. Okay, we have a height effect. I see a height effect. Get effect display. I, some of these names make me think that the the only thing that this buff window was showing were the, the ballots at some point. And so it was just get the effect, show the effect. And then suddenly it was like, oh, it's ballots. <laughs> All right, Lord Zach says they're gonna be lurking now. They have to change a combo box into a multi-select. Good luck. Multi-select uh, combo boxes are, or lists are really weird UI because they're really potentially powerful, but feels really clunky to use, right? Like, you've gotta hold down, is it control, is it shift, is it alt? Uh, you've gotta hold this down, you've gotta click around. If you accidentally click in the wrong place, it all clears. Like, it feels like a solution to the problem of, I have 50 things and you can select seven, what are you gonna do? Um, and I totally get why people use it, but it, it's one of those things that's like, ah, oh, there's gotta be a better way. All right, don't mind me uh, muttering to myself. All right, so we have a height effect, awesome. We also have the um, effects here, ballot effect displays, and we're gonna iterate through that in the same way. So if we have a clear, uh, same thing for i equals one through number of uh, ballots, do self, um, oops, thought we'll come back to that, self question mark. Oh, we do need a local number of valid spaces. Uh, and I should have named that number of anthem spaces as well. Because we, we're not caring about the number of actual things being shown, we're just caring about how many things do we need to iterate through. Uh, okay, number of valid spaces, great. And we need a hide effect that we can call with i. Okay, that's a start. Obviously, there's some other things that we've added to the buff window. Uh, so, uh, to do um, clear um, any timers that are still showing. Uh, test for this. We need to um, clear uh, war speech timers, uh, any effect timers, yeah. Um, clear combat timer if necessary. I mean, it feels like uh, it, this is just timers in general, but they're, they're each a sort of a different type of timer in here. So we wanna check for each of those. But that's a starting point. So we can come on in, unload, reload, come back in. And we can use our cry of the chorus to go ahead and activate ballads and anthems. And then click the clear ballads. Oh, sorry, clear buff window. We can see the combat timer did not clear. And, oh goodness. Kind of regret not taking little red hood up on her uh, option to go murder animals. Oh, I can come back. I'm happy to do that. Because it'd be useful to see that war speech in action. Uh, War Speech is an eight second buff triggered when, oh wait, when you use a ballad. Wait, gotta turn it on. Show War Speech, yeah, there we go. Um, so it's an eight second buff, there we go. Oh, it is being messed up because I turned it on after. Oh my goodness, that's a, that's interesting. Okay, so War Speech comes on, you get an eight second buff, and this is true in Dissonant Stance, but you can activate it with your Healing Major Ballad if you are in Resonant Stance, which I think is a little funny. So even if you've dumped into a Healing Stance, you can still get your plus up to 15% uh, outgoing damage from your War Buffs. Uh, tactical damage, yeah. Uh, so that's cool. So you can be, you could be healing people, but then you could still have that increased tactical damage. That's not bad. Okay, so I'd forgotten that with a major ballad, you can go ahead and trigger that war speech. 
Okay, and we do see serious business was working there. Excellent. So I think I'll follow Little Redhead around for a minute, maybe, uh, and then we'll be able to use combat to test some things. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fortunately, at the festival grounds, there is a that two-way travel. You can basically instantly teleport from West Brigate to the festival grounds, but you're not stuck there, you can come back. This is kind of different than uh, the way like the high moors from Rivendell used to be, where you would just click a person, just like, oh, that's cool, I can click that, where am I? And you're in the middle of the high moors and there's no way back. Just hope you got a stale master before you left Rivendell. <laughs> Surprise. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move Minstrel Buff over a little bit. Thanks, Rosenblum. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it looks like she's gonna fall off. Yeah, I'm looking at this redo of the cat bed that, that Little Redhead did. <laughs> and it used to be on a circular butler tray that had a little bit of a lip. And sometimes it looks like the cat was gonna fall off. And now it's on this uh, IKEA bed for dolls thing, and it really looks like she's gonna fall off. Well, Zach has noticed that I got a new goose from Yondershire. Now, I believe the game won't let you use too many characters in a row. I don't know if it's all the same character, but definitely like if you try three vowels in a row, it kind of was like, no, that's not good. But hyphens break that parsing rule and hyphens are allowed in pet names. So you can definitely do OO dash OO dash OO dash OO. And you know, we could uh, we could definitely imagine a slightly more uh, comprehensive name uh, looker uh, that cares about such things. Um, to the southwest, there are some insects. Okay, I found one on the map. That was Let's. Hmm. I don't remember what's good. All right, Yondershire. Where? What's going on with you? I wish chickens kind of as insects. They're all over. Yeah. Jump. We're going to do something that I almost never do on this stream, which is to almost actually play the game. Mm -hmm. It's weird. And I remember there being uh, some insects uh, southwest of one of these towns. Uh -huh. uh, Nika Freaker. Cool. So, oh, we're biting shrew. That counts as beasts. Um, so we can see uh, these war speeches are popping on up here. And if I were to come on in here into the plugin manager, uh, we do want a, that clearing window function to just go ahead and do what we can do to, to reset all of those. I'm going to put myself on follow here and we're going to jump back into the code. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, I wonder how it's going to kill things in the background, but we're going to look at what really matters and that's the code. <laughs> or Zach has provided some suggestions to play the game you tab to select the enemy and then mash keys 1, 2, and 3 um, yeah that's definitely a way to do it and no shame to anyone who uh, just stops there with their tactics and strategies but if you are playing a minstrel uh, there are some recommendations for instance uh, once you have your 1, 2, and 3 uh, those are my ballads once you have at least 3 of those do think about popping some anthems for me that's 4, 5, and 6 Okay, we can see the reset has not actually reset the current place of anthems. So that's something we want to uh, pay attention to. So if we take a look at where else uses the hide anthem, um, we can see, let's see, anthem shift. Uh, we're going to want to use that next anthem effect place. We're going to want to reset that. Let's find that um, here in the, here we go. Next anthem effect place equals one. We're gonna wanna make use of that. So after we've actually hidden those, next anthem effect place equals one. Let's go ahead and unload and reload. And we can go ahead and clear that buff window. Okay, we can see it's happened with the ballads as well. Possibly also with the anthems. That's uh, not going where I wanted those to go. I, w 
how interesting. Yes. If you hit the clear buff window, it is just faking it out. So if you actually had those anthems in play, when you re-up those anthems, you get a pair of anthem removed, anthem added, because the existing anthem, instead of just resetting the, the timeout on it, the way the game works is it gets rid of that anthem. Uh, so you add an anthem, remove an anthem. And so... Um, We would want to not worry about that for a debug feature. The timers is an interesting one. Actually, that is such a... Just uh, contemplating myself, I think I would want a, instead of this clear buff window, I think I would actually just want to call that function and see that we end up with a result that is the same as we originally got. Let's change tactics. So instead of uh, this being clear buff window, um, we'll actually have this be a call of refresh effect display. We're going to spell it out with some spaces, and that that's going to be going to be a main uh, refresh effect display. It takes no parameters, but it does what we're looking to do. So if I unload that, reload that, and I say refresh effect display, nothing changed um, as expected. I'm going to go ahead and get some of those major ballads out. Oh, that's fascinating. So, as we can see, everything's just gone horribly wrong. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, that's why we have source control. That's why we have commits. <laughs> um, I think this is fascinating. Um, fascinatingly terrible. Okay, so, ultimately, because of the way this buff window is um, done, which I would say is a little wonky, um, or at least... I, I say it's wonky, but I haven't fixed it yet, so that's kind of on me as well. This clear function seems inherently broken. Are we still using it, though? I think the answer is we're not. Let's go ahead and just nip this out. I'll save it into a buffer over there just in case I want it back. Fascinating. If I just click, keep clicking refresh effect display. Okay, so refresh effect display is not our friend right now. Like it's, it feels like it initially does something, but what on earth is going on here? So have I just broken that function irrevocably? Maybe. But no, we use it when we first load. Maybe it's because we call that start. Let's go ahead and Come into start. Start just recreates it completely, and I think maybe that's what's going on. Is if we did an mb main uh, and did dot buff window, and then called start, basically rewrite the whole, re redo the whole thing. Then if we come in here, we've really replicated that effect, and that'll put us back into. Well, it doesn't put it back into a known good set. I am I am befuddled how this t works normally, but we can't call this function, or else it all just breaks. Okay, I think with all the fiddling we've done, refresh effect display really just only works 
uh, with everything at blank. You've just loaded the plugin and it works. And so calling it multiple times is not getting us what we need. But I think that's okay. So we can replicate what we're doing right here. We don't need a button in the UI. We can just unload and reload the plugin. Uh, and that's kind of the use case that we're talking about for uh, running this function. Unload and reload, unload and reload. And so uh, I think that'll work. Thank you so much to my little murder machine for <laughs> doing a great job on our beasts in Yondershire. I am gonna cry when I lose that 1,000 virtue experience for each of these deeds. Uh, it'll just go poof into the air. I haven't gotten my uh, virtue experience carry all yet, um, but one, someday. Maybe we can ask on the forums. Yeah. <laughs> cool idea. That's a bonkers idea. Okay. Um, coming on in to here, the refresh. Oh, why don't I just hit F12? Cool. Um, so, what's going on here? We have some local stuff. Um, but what I'd like to do is say, could we go ahead and we have this table? experiment call add effect effect added for each effect and call it a day return so what will that do it'll fix uh, skip the check for series business um, it's going to be skipping this uh, hiding anthem thing that we're doing but if we're just doing this at the very start then all of those anthems are hidden okay um, the ballad added, the ballot anthem added, anthem added in a different way, show anthem border. Are we doing any show anthem border? No, Are we, what about uh, in here? Anthem added, we do have that in here. So that looks like it's there. We have buff window ballad ended. Okay, are we calling that anywhere? No. Um, things that below that aren't covered yet. And what is that? That is the ballad ended. I like the music here in the Undershire. This, this calls ballad ended. Little Redhead offers apologies to the local Yondershire squirrel population. You know those don't count as beasts, right? Yeah, I just keep targeting them when shooting them. Yeah, I really like, I think I've seen some of the higher level areas where the little critters are no longer targetable. They've got the green bar, and if you are hitting tab, you won't select them, so you have to manually click on them, and then you can't attack them. I much prefer that. Like, I have no interest in depopulating the undershare of squirrels, rabbits, and deer, but I do have an interest in tabbing and defeating things until I can no longer tab and select things, and those two uh, goals are not complementary. One redhead says, that would be ideal. I don't mean to hit them, but my arrows aren't very selective. Yeah. Okay, so what else do we have down here that maybe still needs to be addressed? Um, we're hiding ballot, that's not a problem. All right, coda was played. Hide all borders. I still am not entirely sure what those borders showing is meant to be. Uh, I think that's in fixed mode and I just don't use fixed mode enough to have a sense of that. Okay. <laughs> Lauren Zach has done the same thing that Moobot thinks is a link. You gotta be careful about those periods. I think it's really funny um, like, I'm very used to websites being like www.google.com 
for instance, or Lotro.com. Uh, and I do wonder if like there was a European person who had invented that spec, would we be using commas as the separator? You know, www comma Lotro comma com. Uh, or uh, Lotro, comma, uh, NL. Like that point separator, was that heavily influenced by using a, uh, a period as the radix in um, uh, uh, fractional numbers? Yeah. One dollar and 23 cents being 1.23, not 1, 23, as it is over here in Europe. Uh, and did that you know, influence how people were thinking about doing things? <laughs> okay, um, we have some more balanced stuff. Awesome. Buff window update background. Okay, I think we definitely have that. We do. Great. Update background that's in Anthem added. Update background in Anthem removed. Uh, buff window, the actual function. Cool. Don't need to worry about that. Uh, and then if we're not in fixed mode, then hide everything else. That's not a problem. And then this fun stuff that I thought I was deleting that. Ha! Yes, I completely forgot. I had this background uh, comparison thing. Uh, that's okay. We'll come back to that. The rest of this function is going to get deleted anyway, I hope. Okay, so what we want to do is for, we want to iterate through each of these, i equals one, uh, two, effect count. Let's see, oh, we're coming up towards the end of things, says my phone. Uh, effect count equals that get count, yep. Um, and we could again explicitly say we're incrementing by one that is the default behavior though. And for me, it just clutters things up. It's one less thing that I have to kind of mentally parse through when I'm reading these things. And we want to go ahead and self dot um, effect added. Oh, but do we? Mm. So what do we pass here in order for that to work? OK. Um, we need args, get effect from effect callback. OK, what's that going to do for us? Uh, it's not going to be nil. Um, if args dot effect does not equal nil, otherwise, Okay, so we're looking at something that has args.effect in it. That's the first thing we are getting from here. Okay, well that's easy enough to mock on up. So. Um, we want to go ahead and have args.effect. Yeah, Edgar Arthur is putting, putting in the chat the dot separators and URLs comes from DNS. Within well, DNS, the choice of dot was more or less arbitrary. But in my mind, DNS was probably heavily influenced by uh, American engineers. And it makes me wonder if the dot was sort of the natural, oh, yes, of course you separate these chunks of things with a dot. And I wonder if, like, in an alternate timeline, if that was being done over in the Netherlands, if, uh, you know, if your favorite DNS server would be 8, 8, 8, 8, instead of 8.8.8.8. Okay, so uh, local arg equals effect equals um, whatever it is we're doing here. Sorted effects I. Cool. And then we can just pass arg. And that's my idea is if we wrap this up in a temporary table that has a member called effect, which we're looking for. Uh, and then we call effect added with this thing, which is immediately going to unpack this, which feels ridiculous, right? Like, um, Ideally, in sort of my ideal world, I could pause this a sec and break effect added into two parts, the thing that gets the effect and then the function that handles the effect. And all of this should be in the process effect added function. 
kind of tempted to do that. But we only really care about the name of the effect. Okay. <laughs> I have failed my will check against refactoring. Function, minstrel buff, main, uh, process effect added. And this is going to be uh, effect name. And this is going to get called here normally. Uh, and this would be um, self process effect added with name. Oh, we need the effect also. Okay. Um, then we can we can pass in the effect. We don't need the name. Okay. Hey, that sure sounds like a deed just finished. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have a deed tracker. <laughs> That's okay. So, awesome. Completed Deeds of Yondershire. Thanks so much, little murderbot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Is all your beasts are done? Must be. Shire. Yes, it's all clean again. It's beautiful. Uh, it's uh, it's very satisfying, and you know I don't notice when I'm working on these deeds that there's cool little art at the bottom. Like look look at this little like a uh, crayon scribble, like a Hobbit's rendition of the of Avondim or something. I think it's it's really sweet. Um, just like you can see these as illustrations in a Bilbo book where he's like, oh yes, and let me draw you some Rivendell, and let me draw you some Lundlands. Uh, here's Weathertop. But like I, I love the the sketchy nature of of them, not not sketchy in a bad way, but sketched out nature of them, where it's like one step up from uh, line drawings with some uh, color, and it just it's like this really nice thing. But when my my debug is actually full of stuff, I just I I barely even notice that this is here. I'm so focused up here, even though it it doesn't cover the the image. Um, Anyway, I, I think it's a really nice effect, and I wish I paid more attention to it when all this other stuff was going on in the window, and I just don't. And then the window clears up, and I'm like, oh, where'd that come from? Look at this view of the Andershire. I like the elevation changes that went into this topography. The Shire has some elevation as well, but it, it definitely feels like Yondershire is a couple extra steps of hilliness beyond. Also, what on earth is that hill in the distance? Ost Lagareth, probably. Uh, or the hills beyond it. I'm being asked if I need anything else shot at. I think <laughs> the answer is um, what I was doing was kind of a non-starter. So I guess if you wanted to go shoot things in Enervath, I'm all I'm all for that. <laughs> uh, but other than that, no, I don't. Okay, so um, process effect added. We get that name from the effect, and now we have the name and the effect for these things. Uh, and in here, we can process the effect added. We've gotten the effect. If it's not null, uh, we can actually hoist out this effect added into process effect added, don't even need the name. So if the effect is not null after we've tried to get it, perfect. But we can do the same thing here. Uh, we can do a function, minstrel buff main. We're gonna go ahead and process effect removed. Um, can you take the milestone to the oh, sure. Maybe. Okay. Um, so we're going to process the effect removed. That is a effect. And same basic thing. Everything that's in this effect not equal to null, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that here. They've got the name. And so up here, uh, we're just going to go ahead and self process effect removed. No. Nope. Can't move. Okay. I think we're gonna go run off a cliff here. Yeah, okay. Okay. 
Yeah, it's an easy thing to do. I kind of digress. It's just like, you know what would be really cool is a tall place that you can break a leg off in almost any direction. And I was like, yeah, sure, digress, whatever. I guess it's defensible. Uh, it's like a mini Minas Tirith. Okay, so we have effects removed, effect removed, which is that callback function. And from that, we're going to try to grovel out an effect. And if we are successful, we'll go ahead and process that. But that means if we have an effect, we can bypass that and come into process effect directly. Awesome. Now, I didn't necessarily need to do that with effects removed, but you know, I like the symmetry of it. So instead of self effect added, we can do self um, process effect added and add in the sorted effect i. And at that point, we no longer need to uh, bundle up our effect into a fake table, a temporary table, for it to immediately be unbundled. And that feels a little bit better. Okay. Um, so we are not checking the ballot ended thing, but I think that's okay because again, uh, we are running this when the plugin loads and that's pretty much the only time. And if the ballot plays equals one and self coda was played, again, we just loaded it, coda can't be played. So I think both of those things are things to think about eventually. Like, oh, did this matter that we dropped this ability? Uh, but it's not going to be a problem here. All right, um, are you complaining because I've got stuff in this function, in this, uh, that's, in yes you are, okay. We'll just uh, hoist that out into a clip uh, board there, and in fact, we're done there. We don't even need a return statement. Okay, so what do we have then? Oh, uh, call effect out, yeah, that's it. And okay, I'm a little worried about trying this out, but there's plenty of things to attack here. So we're gonna go ahead and first unload and reload. And it did load, so there weren't any syntax errors. All right, let's go ahead and get something going here. Yeah, I got a few red dots on the map. I really liked that um, because on Treebeard, we are kind of level locked, uh, we can, we were going back and doing something in Lothlorien, right? And it's been months since we did anything seriously in Lothlorien. And yet, um, there are still red dots on the radar because Lothlorien is still level 60, right? Uh, and, and we're level 65, so even the level 58 stuff in, in Lothlorien, and even some stuff in Moria, um, is still very uh, on level. All right, so if we go ahead and unload and reload. <gasps> it works? Maybe it works. We gotta, we gotta try this out. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing any visual glitches like we were seeing. Well, let's go ahead and unload, reload. Oh my goodness. Wait, oh my goodness, that means the war speech active, wait, no, the war speech times would have been off, probably. Uh, let's go ahead and start up a new war speech. Go ahead, unload, reload, unreload, reload. Yeah, we can see that war speech timer is gonna be off. Uh, it's gonna, but it's gonna expire correctly. Yeah, so we're doing effect added, and right now we're not checking to see how long that thing lasts. And that's a place I guess we could improve on, but War Speech lasts for such a small amount of time, uh, eight seconds, that it's never gonna be a problem for long. But what we could do is we could actually look at how much, what's the duration of that effect, and use that instead of just assuming eight seconds, we could actually know how long that is. Um, I'm comfortable not doing that. Um, but let me come on down here. For war speech added, we can add a note that says, in the case of war speech already being active when we log in, or when we load the plugin, we could pay attention to the effect duration instead of hard coding eight seconds. That would be nice anyway, because hard coding the eight seconds, again, it's nice to not hard code things that are available from the API. Uh, and we know right now that it's eight seconds for war speech, but what if it's eight and a half seconds uh, next um, in 24 hours? <laughs> 
things like that. Actually, the timing on War Speech is really interesting because War Speech doesn't uh, displace an existing War Speech. So if you activate War Speech um, and you do it too fast, and you can do that by just doing ballads, uh, if you activate a War Speech, uh, we need something to, to shoot ballads at. Here we go. That's a good. So in this case, if I'm only doing ballads, I'm just rocking back and forth between them, I can activate a war speech before one of those three war speeches is expired. Uh, and it works very different from anything else. You don't replace an existing war speech, you just don't get your, uh, your next war speech. And so it's, it seems like it's been very carefully timed so that um, you are strongly encouraged to do ballad something else, ballad something else, ballad something else. And if you do that, then your war speeches just naturally happen. You get your something else out, and then the war speech drops off just in time for you to get your third war speech back. And I found that really interesting, that they could have done it just like anthems, where you, if you get a, a fourth war speech, the oldest one just drops off, and they didn't do that. Um, and it feels like you know that wouldn't have happened except by intent. So they're intentionally guiding minstrels into doing that alternation between um, ballad and something else, ballad and something else. So we're already encouraged to do that in uh, Warrior's Scald. We're already encouraged to do that with the, um, oh, where is it? There's uh, one of these effects uh, reduces the duration of your uh, cooldowns by one second. There we go, haste. So each ballad reduces the active cooldown of your cries and calls. So you're already encouraged to do a lot of ballads, like every other thing being a ballad, and that helps all your other stuff stay in rotation. <laughs> Where's Zach? The war speech got up. Better get it back before we start a war. Yeah, my, uh, my understanding is the red line used to be called War Speech, and so anyone who was playing back in the day when, when that was War Speech um, and seeing it now as Warrior Scald is just uh, you know, something new to get used to. But for me, uh, it was Warrior Scald before I started playing again a couple of years ago, so I don't have that problem. Maybe I will starting tomorrow. <laughs> Everything's new! Now it's the Scream-A-Lot stance. I mean, yeah, fair. Okay, um, what do we got, what do we got? So this is really interesting because what we saw is that by simply iterating through our process effect added function, or the, the effect added callback with the sorted effects, uh, we can make use of that logic that we've hoisted out for per effect processing, even in the case where we wanna rip through all of them because we just loaded the plugin. And I really like this because Except for that war speech thing. Maybe we'll come back to that. Hello, Dwarf Marker. Um, I really like the idea that even if you're in the middle of combat, uh, most of the things are going to come back. The combat timer is not necessarily going to come on back. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> but the fact that the anthems and the effects are going to come back uh, makes me very happy. And it means we can go ahead and stop worrying about the backwards compatibility of this old function and just improve those new functions as necessary. And we've already got those couple of things to think about. Uh, again, if you're just unloading and reloading the plugin, then I don't really care about um, whether a coda was just played. I don't really care about those things. I think those are pretty safe. Um, all right, so uh, thought effect place equals one, ballot's active, and so this is going to call ballad ended. Yeah, doesn't matter for just starting up. If this was coda was played, coda was played is not going to be true because we're just starting up. And then suddenly we're OK with that. So to do, reflect refresh, uh, refresh, refresh effect display needs to go uh, to not go away. Well, it's not. We just grab, um, but don't forget to handle serious business. That's done. Uh, and so this whole idea is done. Probably, I guess I'm gonna find out this uh, coming weekend as we play with or without the new drop. Uh, neat, let's look at what that looks like in uh, source control. So, in our to-do file, um, we have eliminated the redundant code and refresh effect display. Awesome, hopefully. 
Uh, okay, in our main, oh, well, that's a lot of differences. Let's pop that out into an external comparison. Oh, of course, so our effect added, we're gonna wanna go ahead and not have those um, turbine statements. So when we get into process effect added, let's go ahead and kill that effect added. And in our process effect removed, let's kill that uh, output as well. Coming on back in, we can see the effect added when we pro uh, pulled out that process effect added. Um, you can see most of that's still the same. In fact, if we ignore the white space changes, uh, we can see we have the function call, we have the function declaration, some comments, and that's it. Over here, process effect removed, same idea. We have those, we have this, great. And then finally, uh, we have just deleted everything after that table at sort and added in a process effect added. Done. Do I think that maybe we've lost some functionality in here, especially for fixed frames? Maybe, but I think fixed frames especially are gonna be highly impacted by this next release because they show all the possible anthems. And I think we're gonna to wanna to redesign that. So anyone who uses the fixed frame of Minstrel Buffs, I'd love to hear ideas based on the new design. Like, do we wanna see like a minor and major version of each of those anthems and light them up if they're active? Is that the right way to go? In which case it'd be maybe one row of minors, one row of majors, and then just sort of border up the ones that are active. I could, I could see with that. Um, but either way, there's gonna be massive changes, and I, I would imagine at that point it's gonna be Mintral buff two. Um, there's just, at that point, everything will have been changed in the plugin. There's not a lot of point in just calling it a patch anymore. <laughs> um, so I guess keep an eye out for that in November when I have time again. <laughs> okay. So I am happy with those changes. So we're gonna come on in here and commit that. Um, the option window, we ended up not adding anything. We're gonna go ahead and discard that height change, this new line, and we just have the option change. And we do not need that setting serious business to blah. We're gonna go ahead and discard that line, and that is it. Eliminated redundant code and refresh effect display. Oh, that's so good. That was, that was my main goal for today. I think we're gonna start wrapping up the stream but I'm very happy that we got to that point in the code update. Obviously there's more things to do, more things to think about. I think the next big one I want is buff windows being a window and containing a member that is a window and doing everything in that dot window boggles my mind. And I would love to kind of change how that works. So you just have a buff window instead of the buff window having a window. So that's probably gonna be my next goal is fix that. Uh, because for me, that, that just makes life harder. Uh, but it's a big change, and the buff window is the main window of the uh, application, uh, of the plugin. And so I'm, I'm confident that some, uh, some changes will go un undone at first and cause problems, and we'll just have to cycle, uh, cir circle back around on that. Uh, but that'll be the next thing. And then again, that's a plugin maintenance thing. This, this plugin is over a decade old, maybe. Uh, and so we're just, we're just coming back in with some lessons learned here. <laughs> yeah, it's a little wretched. I heard you like windows. So I give your win window a window. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what it is. Um, the window has a window. And instead of, you know, the window being a window, it's a, it's, it is a window that has a window. And it's just, hmm. So if we come in into the original minstrel buff, we can actually see um, that the original version 1.0 dates back to 2011. Oh, those, those days of, of yore. Uh, so yeah, it's 11 years old, and there's just uh, there's some stuff in there that I would do differently, and so I will. Uh, no uh, offense meant to Melita. The plugin was amazing from day one. It's been awesome. Uh, I'm just very happy to, to hopefully be improving it in some small way. Okay. Uh, or at least making it better for, for me, which, uh, you know, it's a, it is a motivator when I'm working on plugins. Okay, we can see we have five uh, things that we did today. We're going to go ahead and push that on out to our cloud-based repository. Excellent. Uh, all right. Well, I'm not seeing any last-minute comments and questions coming to chat, but you've got another minute or two here while I grab a drink and... Make sure I'm not forgetting anything.
Where is your cat? That's an excellent question. So one of them is right behind me on the couch, but unfortunately, he's, his coloring is brown and the couch is green. So when he's in the shadow like that, he's just very hard to see. So if you, uh, if you look in the background there, you might see him, uh, him you know, cleaning himself. <laughs> the redhead's gone to harass him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's another cat sleeping just off screen here. Uh, but she'd wake up if I pulled her bed on over. <laughs> just right says, I appreciate all your work on plugins. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, I uh, tend to be hyper focused on things like the D Tracker and the Minster Buff plugins, but um, I'm glad if anyone else is able to make use of these. <laughs> yeah, just right uh, calls Casper a camel cat. Casper has white. Uh, tips on his paws and he's got a white um, uh, thing across his chest and if he's curled up on the couch you, you can't see any of it. He's just dark fur against a green couch. I don't know. I guess uh, if anyone can in full screen oh man he is so hard like yeah you can just see the white tips on, on, the, on the paws there uh, right there and you can just see the white bit, bit on, the, on the chest and that's it. Oh well. One of these days, uh, Casper is still keeping an eye on, on me from afar, but one of these days, maybe we'll tend to closer to the camera. That's okay. All right. Da, da, da. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I think that is everything we're going to cover today. Thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of Stealthy Cats and Lotro plugins. I do hope to see you here next week, and until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.